Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the official ARC podcast, number 131. My name's Coach Brad, and I'm here with the core team. Your host tonight, as always, our wonderful leader. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Coach Brad. And folks, welcome back to another edition of the ARC Nightly Podcast. Hope you're all enjoying your weekend, calm, cool, and collected here on board the ARC, earning, getting your ROI. Most of you are already working on your second ROI, your 2x on your investment. Some lucky few have won the Spark Rewards and you are just sailing away so fast, what we like to call here the nitro mode. And we're seeing every single day, folks, amazing growth. We're seeing people take the time to do their due diligence as they wonder, as they hear from their friends, from their families, from their fellow traders, who are smiling ear to ear, who are happy, calm, cool, collected, earning, hedging themselves against inflation here on the ARC. On the right side of history, on the right side of the hedge against inflation, understanding that the fractional banking system is a scam. You know, this week we've been we've been talking, we've been looking at what's happened with the fines, the SEC staking for the average Joe in centralized exchanges, which is a smart money move. Seven, eight, nine percent on your fiat in exchange. You're not going to get that in traditional bank, but they're 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 being banned from doing so. We've said it. We need a bigger boat. There's so many folks that need to come here, and we've been talking about this for some time. It's not about crypto. It's not about traditional finance. It's not about the stock market. There's a whole reset into the system as it is not holding any true value. It's a game that's rigged. The invisible taxation of inflation. The real economy died in 2007, 2008, folks. Just because you keep printing and you keep telling people it's okay, you see some of these traders, you look at the stock market and these people are like snoring lines of cocaine folks they're delusional this doesn't make any sense folks there's no correlation between value inflation and business some people are thinking that the stock market and the economy are correlated they're not they're two different things it's like the, the crazy people have taken control of the crazy house. And I hate to say it, but the worse it gets, the more tangible, the more appealing the offer here at ARC is, the more relevant. Folks, we are in DeFi. We don't need to show a passport your driver's license, your fingerprint, your DNA sample. You can come here and invest, protected by the smart contracts, without having to answer to anyone how you get on and how you get off. That That is your prerogative and that is your responsibility. And in whatever jurisdiction you live in, I, I do advise you, Follow the rules, follow the laws. Be careful. But when you're here, 
you have the freedom to invest and to grow. And if you want to help and you want to, you know, save someone else and show them there is a better way, Bitcoin has been out since over a decade. We're seeing the banks fall apart and we've seen it before. It's a domino effect. The solution has been here for over a decade. They have a second chance. We didn't have summer contracts back then. We didn't have DeFi back then. But we have it now. And I hope that every single one of you joins me on this mission to educate how to use a MetaMask, a Web3 wallet, how to analyze tokenomics, how to understand an audit and say, take a small chance, hedge against everything else that's wrong. You live in a system that's broken and there's no guarantees that this will be the solution to all your problems, but at least, at least on a financial level, my friend, this could save you. Let's get this crypto. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Brett Norton. Sorry for the, the long rant there, Brett. But uh, seeing all this news has got me fired up. <laughs> no, there's so much, uh, <laughs> so much going on right now. No, it just it, it makes me thankful, you know, that we're in this project and not out there in the in the the, the hodl, the hold on to your dear life, <laughs> you know. Um, it, it, Try to catch cash in that FBI's insurance up to two hundred fifty k. What is that? Like thirty years old? That that two hundred fifty k? I mean, back then you you must have been like a billionaire. They, they, back in the <laughs> but they, it used to be 100k and then i think two years ago it was raised to 250 or maybe two three years ago or something but yeah it used to be even a little scarier um but uh, i think the mention on that was the silicon valley bank said that it was you know majority of their uh depositors were well over the 250k because it was mostly a business bank so that's going to have ripple effects through a lot of different companies that had accounts there and, and holdings and everything else. So yeah, I'm sure that's, you know, going to have a little fallout kind of like we saw with FTX where, you know, it, it snowballs a little, but uh, it seems like the initial kind of shock and awe stuff with uh, USDC that, you know, that uh, made a few headlines, but seems to have recovered fine. And we understand circle and black rock and all that. So uh, I wasn't too. But, 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 it's, but it's funny, Brad. They're, they're trying to say it's a crypto bank. You know right, the narrative, right? Yeah. It is yeah. not a crypto bank. Let's be clear. No. There is. A, yeah. You're either a bank, yeah. and you're FDIC insured, and you're regulated, and you're and you're and you're tapped in to a central bank, or you're not. That you're crypto friendly. Great. But this isn't just the crypto problem. This is sure. this is a banking problem, and there's a bigger elephant in the room, which is all the auto loans that people can't pay. Yeah, you know, coming to roost. And, and, I mean, that was all the. Well, uh, there's some big names. <laughs> yeah, that was the that was this you know the stimmy checks turning into uh, inflation in the auto industry because people could you know obviously afford a much. A uh, larger loan amount, as well as uh, qualify for you know subprime loans, and so yeah, those are in the the billions of dollars in subprime auto uh, auto loans that are out, and and if we have an, an employment issue, <laughs> if we have an employment issue, uh, which which we assume is coming in you know many sectors uh, as inflation goes up, and which is the intent of the Fed, they've they've stated that they're their whole premise is that ultimately, you know, we'll have, uh, you know, unemployment rates increase. So as that happens, those those loans are going to get harder to pay than those repossessions. I mean, if people don't have a job, then they don't need to drive. <laughs> and so those those luxury goods and things that everybody gobbled up, you know, in the past three years, those are going to start to hit the markets and, and those banks are going to have issues servicing that debt and become insolvent and, and all those other things. So 
yeah, I think, you know, we're seeing some initial dominoes fall. Um, I don't, you know, I, I still, we've seen the Fed do so many things that we never thought they would do, or at least I didn't think that they would do to keep these markets propped up. So um, un until they're ready to let them fall, they're going to keep them propped up. So I think that this, uh, this first bank here could be the narrative that the crypto bank or it's associated to crypto, it fits the narrative that's, uh, uh, you know, going in line with the, the stable coins and the SEC actions, and, you know, the political game that's being played right now in terms of crypto. So, yeah. It's just, it's, it's funny. It's, it's funny, bro. It's, it, these people are in shock and awe with their, with their jaws dropping. I mean, uh, see, because see, there's this thing that happens when you live in America, and I'm sure you can relate to this. They're like, oh, well, that's happening in Argentina. That's happening right. in Lebanon. Okay, those, those are shit countries, not here. Bank runs? What? <laughs> no, no, this is America. <laughs> and... It's been proven that you can't trust the banks. And the only reason that it, there wasn't a complete collapse and anarchy on the streets is because of the bailout, which has created, you know, that extra inflation and tax revenue that will always catch up. But they still trust in the banks. And then they're like, dude, we, we have an alternative here. But you're, you're led to believing that that's the only option. And, that, and that's right. just the lack of of education. It's like, it's like we need a bigger boat, but now we need, you know, not only a bigger boat, but we need more teachers. We need more educators and say, keep in your bank what you need to pay your bills and take the rest out. We, we, we don't have to wait five days for an international wire transfer that costs you 35 bucks. Plus the three and a half percent exchange fee according to the currency you're going for, because they don't know any better. It's sad, but it's true. Well, in the FDIC, they think, was they think McDonald's is the is the is the only restaurant in town. You know, come on, wake up, open your eyes. Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say the FDIC was warning about bail-ins. Um, I think it was just at the end of last year. It, it all kind of runs together for me now because, to me, I think most of us here kind of see what's coming. Um, but, you know, they were warning about the bail-ins already last year. And in a bail-in, basically, the bank can legally take your money, uh, which they just did. Uh, those people will never get that money back. The, F the FDIC is going to bail out certain people, but not to the level of, of uh, balances that they had. So if you have, uh, you know, if you have money in the bank and it all goes dark, you know, one day or there's a, you know, severe bank run or something like this happens with Silicon Valley, you know, insolvency, bankruptcy, whatever, um, you're not going to get your money back. <laughs> so, you know, if, if you need cash, I would say, you know, have, have some cash available for those instances. So you can at least, you know, bridge over to um, another bank if possible and, and, and keep, keep moving, but they're not going to, they're not going to help you <laughs> as a consumer. You're going to be left making phone calls and, probably not getting anybody to answer the phone. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's going to be a tough situation, but I, I would say that uh, if you can diversify into multiple banks, that'd probably be smart. Um, you know, smaller local credit union, plus maybe one or two of the other majors spread your cash around as much as you can. And just that hope it's not a systemic shock, you know, that, that ultimately comes. Um, but also keep some cash on the sidelines if you can, uh, you know, precious metals, I have some. I don't think that uh, that's going to you know, last you too long. Yeah, I think that's sort of the the hail mary. <laughs> um, but if you use better it for, be ready to defend it, you better yeah, be ready exactly. to defend that metal. <laughs> yeah, it, it's more of a wealth preservation thing. But there's also on chain gold options and things. So yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, opportunities once you get into DeFi, I think, to insulate yourself as well. You know, we have Ultimo's partner um, with an offshore bank. And so if you're concerned about local issues, that might be an option for you. Uh, but then also keeping, you know, some in a wallet. And we're going to have some other solutions coming for ways to off-ramp as well. So, yeah, I think the, the, the 
future is looking bright here at ARC, and I think that we're going to be able to bring some solutions to the table uh, that are going to help people uh, through these through these times, just giving you options and choices. And we've talked about that a lot, is that, you know, moving into some of these transitions, uh, this, you know, financial, uh, you know, system changeover, if you want to call it that, uh, I think maintaining and, and having choices and being educated on how these different systems work is going to keep you well ahead of the game. And uh, we talk about that here, and we're open to talking about it more. If, if people you know have questions or they want to discuss these kind of things, we can do that um, either deep by sessions or after hours for sure. So, yeah. Did you want me to give a quick, uh, just a quick update on some of the development? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, just to, just to keep the timeline here. Uh, we're, we're kind of way past now. Uh, yeah, so today we, we worked on some of the things for the, the sales funnel. Um, Alice and I had some conversations with Mr. Green about these uh, investment packages. We've been kind of talking about them and throwing them around uh, ways that uh, people can buy a uh, – buy a fixed amount uh, of an investment, basically take, let's, let's just use an example of $1,000. Um, they, they hit a buy now button from our landing page. And then that money is distributed across uh, various aspects of the protocol for them automatically and basically get them into the investment, uh, put some money into the auto allocation system and allows them to have some runway with a, uh, a predetermined uh, investment portfolio into ArcBuy. And what we're trying to do there is to take some of the guesswork out of, uh, you know, in the learning curve on the front end of what the different investments are, how you should, you know, allocate certain amounts of money. Obviously, it's going to be up to the investor whether they want to purchase that package, but then give them uh, the option if they say, hey, I want to get started. They've seen the mobile app from a friend. They've scanned the QR code. They've gone to the site. They want to hit buy now. They can purchase a fixed uh, amount and then when they hit that uh, buy now button it then automatically pushes that arc um, or that BUSD into the foundation the uh, the vault or the legacy NFT so we're, we're trying to take some of that upfront decision making out of the process uh, for people that are new to crypto that would spend you know hours and hours probably researching where to put money and, and how to get into the protocol we just want to do that for them, and then they can start their education process, get familiar with the investment by participating in the investment every day, compounding, uh, withdrawing, and, and following the, you know, following the different actions they need to take for the various aspects of the products involved, and, and really give them a head start uh, into the investment based on their investment profile. So we think that's going to be something that we work in and uh, hopefully have that. Uh, around the time we have the on-ramp available. Um, but Mr. Green's going to be working on that next week for us. And, and uh, we'll hopefully have that ready when the, the landing page is finished, the PWA, the on-ramp, and all that stuff is coming together. But that's kind of an update on our end. Otherwise, everybody's just sort of working on their respective things. Um, we've been working on a, a document and a roadmap update that hopefully we'll push out next week. We just need to have a little bit of a roundtable with the dev team and uh, Atlas and I to make sure that it's uh, set in stone. The dates and the timelines are, are good for everybody. But we'll be publishing that, uh, I would say, within the next week or so and fleshing out the roadmap a little bit more so people can see these utilities that are coming. We're ready to make those announcements. So that's exciting. Absolutely. Thank you for the update, Brett. And uh, Coach Brad, in the interest of time, what have you got? cooking for us this evening. Uh, tonight we have uh, Crypto Fergie. He makes videos all the time for ARC. He's a, a great, uh, he flies the flag of ARC. He absolutely loves it. It's great to see him continuously pumping out content uh, along with Donatello. Um, they are our two, two of our biggest advocates here and they absolutely love the ARC fire system for for good reason. And um, shout out to Driptopian. I love calling him out because I know he can't respond, but uh, he is our special guest tomorrow evening. And I'm very much looking forward to having him on, introducing him to the community, well, him introducing himself to the community 
and uh, talking about what he's got cooking as well. So, um, Crypto Ferg is not with us tonight, but uh, I'll go ahead, show his video, and then we'll have a, a quick discussion about it and move on to the new and improved sweet widget. We are bringing back the Wheel of Names. It is a much more exciting way to draw um, the winner. Uh, it's you know it's much more engaging and. Uh, you know, there can be no question of its legitimacy and how fair it is. So looking forward to that as well. That is uh, some great work by Mistletoad. He's covering all that um, admin work. Doing a pretty good job. Round of applause to him. And uh, yeah, so let me just quickly switch back over to my laptop and I'll get the video on the go. Let's see what the Fergie has cooked up for us. And looking forward to tomorrow evening having Jertopian here. We've been watching uh, his his development here on the ARC and getting more familiar with the system, having his new journey. As uh, It's no secret that so many folks here have already received their ROI, and uh, we're having so many folks like Brandon, Drip Guide, Join a bit after, but getting closer every single day. Go ahead, Coach Rap. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir, you're completely correct. And uh, Gyptopian has, has built himself a, uh, a very sizable um, syndicate over there. He's really rocking. He's got some of his YouTube friends involved. They they're building teams under him. He's he's really starting to fly, which is which is great to see. He's a great networker, and uh, you know he's he's got a lot of connections in DeFi because he's very well respected uh, in the DeFi space, uh, fully docs and all the rest of it. So yeah, really looking forward to having him on. And we've we've had some personal discussions. I know he's got some. Uh, oh, sorry, let me just put my phone on silent. I know he's got um, some big some big plans uh, regarding ARC and some, some other stuff that he's working on, but, you know, it's not for me to reveal. We'll let him talk about that if he wishes to do so tomorrow evening. But um, for tonight, we shall get on and do a bit of Fergie time. <laughs> What's up, everyone? It's... Let me just check something. If I mute myself here, tell me if you can still hear the video because Charlie's about to bark his head off because the door's about to go. <laughs> go ahead. Can you hear the video? Atlas, was the sound from the video coming through? No, it was. Um... <laughs> No, sir. It's going through okay. your speakers to your microphone. Okay. So, uh, I, I mean, if you, I how... if you need a little break, or if you want to send me the link, uh, I could also play it myself. Oh, that might be an option for tonight, just because Rosie is 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 on her way home, and Charlie, as you know, he uh, <laughs> he likes to bark when the door goes, and it will certainly interrupt the video. So, if that is a possibility, that would be absolutely great. Just to save everyone's ears, I wouldn't want to. Uh, I wouldn't, you know, yeah. the bark's very loud. But I've sent you that link. So. Yeah. Thank you. I'll go ahead and let's do the screen share over here on my side. We should be fine. Thank you very much. Give me a second. Oh, oh, yeah, Bizey Dips. I have double booked for tomorrow. Um, let me, I'll hit you back in the DMs because Lee has very limited time. He can come on because of his time zone. I'll, I'll get back to you in DMs right now, sir. Tomorrow night is our regular spot for um, our great friends over in Australia. Um, 
that is completely my mistake, but I'll, uh, I'll sort this out, no problem. Can you hear that okay? Uh, it's still a bit low. What's up, everyone? It's Crypto Fergie uh, here. It's that time again, guys. It's Saturday morning. It's ArcFi time. No, it's Fergie time. But we're going to talk about ArcFi. This, I haven't been talking about ArcFi all week. I've just been doing my allocation stuff and all that I do. But I've been so busy in the real world, guys, hustling, trying to create passive, not passive income, income to actually put into ArcFi to create that passive income so that I don't have to work as hard as I do. But anyway, guys, we have new team members. We have our new team members in our syndicate. We have some alpha to drop, dates to drop whenever the mobile app's coming out. But guys, you know me. I am not your financial advisor. Do your own research before. You know, part with any of that harder, guys. Okay, guys, for anybody new here, we're going to cover some of the stuff that the community's been asking me because I suppose we're all at different stages. We Some of us are really, really... Uh, know everything about the, the interface, the user interface, um, all about the tokenomics and stuff. I'm still learning, but I've been into something like a couple of months now, and I have learned some. So we are onboarding new people, and I know who you are. So thank you for choosing this team. Um, we're at 16 now, so we are. But anyway, guys, let's take a wee look at where we're at. Um, yeah, Syndicate, really, really pleased to see this growing. So we now have 16 in our Syndicate. Airdrops have been done. I think I have a few more airdrops to done, but I'll get that done tomorrow and Sunday. Yes, so we have 16 on our syndicates. As you can see, we have 16 uh, addresses down here. Everybody has been pretty much airdropped. We're going to get the rest of them done on Sunday. But um, for the next phase of airdrops, we're going to be, your account has to be 50 ARC. So it has, it has to have 50 ARC in it. And then we're going to raffle anybody that is over 50 ARC in the syndicate team and then we're going to do rather than do, do an airdrop where they're, you're getting like half an half an arc we're going to do something like five arc and if you're over 50 arc in your vault you're in for a chance to win we'll do a spin the wheel and we're going to drop five arc to one lucky winner and then three arc to the, the second place uh, we're going to do two draws so you got to have 50 arc in your accounts guys so Work them accounts because it's only going to benefit you. Okay, guys, so the other thing we're going to take a look at today is, yeah, somebody asked me what is the benefits of ARC? Is it because it's stable, stable coin? No, it's not a stable coin. It is, it's not like an LMS, which is pegged. This is not pegged. This is just basically the intelligent liquidity controller doing what it has to do. It basically, when there's buying and selling, it softens it so it does so that there's no big pumps and no big dumps. It just softens the whole transition of that. And as you can see, it's doing an excellent job. So this price can still go up as the influx, which I expect to be an influx of people coming in after this is dropped. Let's just let's just watch this here because this is absolutely fire. So it is absolutely can't wait to this app drops. Um because I believe it's going to leave us as leaders to be able to onboard so many more new people onto this here that are that are not crypto savvy, not DeFi savvy. Um, it's just going to be next level. I know there's been a few updates, and this is getting dropped, guys. The date for this is being dropped is the 31st of March. So we have something like it's the 11th now. So we have 20 days, and this is this is going to be live. How incredible. It's going to be epic. It's going to be epic, guys. Um, syndicates are going to be growing mad, so I, I, I'm really looking forward to that. So I have, um, it's just beautiful. So it is. this is another thing we're going to talk about is the widget sweeps. You'll find that, guys, on the official ARC Telegram group. The link is in the description. Um, as you can see, this is what it looks like. You can enter this. Anybody can enter this here. Uh, Daily ARC token price worth between $50 and $100. Coach Brad is the moderator of that there, so he is. What you do, you just click this. You must register. So I have registered. So we just get rid of that. I've actually already done all of this, so I have. So um, what, what it will ask you to do, 
there will be two more. I have to do this article here. But there will be two more sections in here where you put your uh, BSC wallet address because rather than them having to find you, they've got your wallet address and your Telegram a name also, and then you go through the procedures of what it's asking, you like a video. And I have found this really, really good as a content creator. Um, this has really boosted me on. We're something like 1,025 uh, subscribers now, which is mind-blowing, guys. I'm coming up on a year, so it is in April, towards the end of April, when I started my journey as, as a content creator in DeFi. And guys, it's been incredible. And ArcFi and the Drip team, Drip community has really supported this channel. So it is. So I like to support you guys also. Um, so this is flawless, guys. All your, your, and if you DC, DCN, it'll always sit here. So it will in the pending deposits. I have 538 ARC token. I want to get to the thousand. Once I have a thousand ARC token, I will, um, work on my backside off to get this done because it'll be, that's 20 arc a day we'll be making. So we, when we do our allocation, of, well, I did a, an airdrop, so I needed to airdrop. We can change it here. So probably just gonna leave that, but you can change your withdraw to, I normally do take this away. I do 60, 40, and then I'd let you know where you're going to be over the next. So if you find you're having, you're starting to fight against the CWR, do this to see if it starts to bring you up to the 0.5 again into the green where it keeps you healthy. You don't want to be dropping to the 0.75 or even to the 0.5% because once you get to the 0.5%, you're there for the history of your wallet. So you are. So, but um, I'm just going to leave that there because I need to take another airdrop out tomorrow and airdrop my team. And then that'll be the team totally airdrop. So it will. So guys, that's just me quickly going over a few of the dates. Thank you for the team member that has come on board. I know who you are because you hit me up uh, in a uh, Twitter DM. So uh, I appreciate you joining our team. And guys, if you want to join the team, you know what to do. The link's in the description. Glad, only too glad to have you. You'll get an airdrop right away, so you will. Um, but as I said, from the next airdrop on, which is the end of this month, you need to have 50 arc and we're doing two two draws one for five and then one for two or three was it i said i think it was two or three one whatever one it is but guys that's it for me crypto for you see you in the next one have a wonderful weekend Great stuff from Fergie, just keeping his community and the art community up to date with everything that he's doing in art Dropping the alpha for for the date of the uh, you know the the PWA um, mobile application and I, I I love his style of video. He's got a very high quality studio and just a just a great guy. And uh, you know I really enjoy watching his content. Um, and just a quick update: um, tomorrow night is um, our residency spot for Max Power and Buys It Dips. That was my mistake and uh, Lee. Sorry, Driptopian will be with us on Monday night. So tomorrow night is the regular spot for the Badgers. Yes, sir. Uh, look forward to, to seeing their, their content. Always great stuff. And then Monday night will be, will be Driptopian. So the next couple of All Aboard sessions are certainly not to be missed. Some, some great stuff coming up. Do we have any questions or comments about um, Fergie's video? Going once, going twice. Okay, moving swiftly on, trying to keep to that time schedule. Uh, Mistletoad, if you are ready, sir, could you share your screen and we will do the wheel of names for today's week widget raw. Let's do it. Looking uh, great work there, sir. Uh, you know, I love the love the wheel of names. Much more exciting than the sweet widget draw itself. So, and this is it? every yes, we can. And just so people know, this is exactly the same. It's the sweet widget. Uh, participants just moved over onto the wheel of names so it's uh, more engaging more exciting for the community and you can 
you can see it happening right in front of your eyes. All right. Alice, you got the sound effect? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Which one you want? <laughs> the spin the wheel one. The Let's wheel give it a second one. here. Okay, in the count of three, two, one. Oh, Krillian, so close. Krillian has been with us since the beginning um, and he has participated in every single giveaway and he has never won anything and he was so close to winning there tonight. But uh, Zach Tiop, Zach Tiop, congratulations, sir. You are today's winner. Man, that's like a, one of those AI names. But Mistletoad, how did you, how did you get... The arc logo in the wheel. Can you can you tell us a little bit about that? Because that's that's an upgrade. I mean, I've seen a lot of upgrades here behind the scenes, but this is like this is fun of house, man. Everybody can see that there's something special <laughs> happening. I was just playing around with it. And I, I, I noticed there's a there's a bunch of settings you can change, and you know you can put some logos in the middle. You can even change all the colors around. So maybe we'll have to get it some matching art colors or something for the wheel. Wow. Man, that is a thing of beauty. Hey, nice. could, could you spin it again? Does the, the whole thing spin like like a, like a turntable? Yeah. yeah. Wow. i never seen the arc spinning like that, man. It's like those really cool rims that they put on the cars. <laughs> Amazing. Ooh, and Vanilla course, Gorilla. Vanilla Gorilla. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. He's, he's three minutes and a dollar short. But it's okay, because he might win the Spark Rewards coming up. Let's go. Great stuff, Mistletoe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on again, Atlas. Um, it is time to unleash the beast. All right, man. I'm loving that spin the wheel. I think it was a good idea to go back to it. And now that it looks even better and improved, uh, yeah, more interactive. People are more involved. You get to see all the names. The only thing missing is Vanna White. And if you know who Vanna White is, you're probably too old. That's an insider joke here for any of you out there who know who Vanna White is. Really? So with that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Really, I knew I knew somebody out there knew what I was talking about. <laughs> Vanna, my girl. <laughs> you remember those days? Oh yes, sir. She's still on there. What? Yeah, her. I man. mean, she's got a pet. What? Yeah. Are you serious? Absolutely. Man, they're doing that that's, shit in wheelchairs, but yeah. I mean, with a peg leg and a kickstand, I would imagine by this point. Yeah, in pain, <laughs> walking, you know. Yeah, I think I think Coach Roberto used to date her back in the day. We'd have to ask her that. <laughs> All right. So moving on. In the uh, great spirit of keeping on, and 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 again, I want to apologize to everyone for for uh, not being here as usual on time. Sorry about that. Thank you for your patience and hanging on. So we're going to get through this uh, pretty quick. Let's unleash the beast. We're, we're not at an all-time high again, but there is enough spark to make anyone go into adventure mode. Let's get to script folks.
impossible for me not to fall in love with you, baby. Yeah. We can't see your screen, Atlas, just so you know. Thank you, sir. Go ahead and share that. Let's give us a second here. Can you see it now? Yes, sir. All right. And there it is, folks. Tonight's lucky winner of the Spark Prize, their wallet ends in 926B. And they are the lucky winner of 363.14 ARC. Congratulations. Let's go. Sheesh. We also hit... We also hit 3,700 volt accounts today. We are now over that, as everybody can see. It just keeps growing. ILC is looking great, too. 846, 304 BUSD. And liquidity on a tear over on PancakeSwap, $829,993. Sheesh. What a beautiful Saturday. This gets better and better, folks. Is that a new winner? Maybe the crypto putter, he knows if that is a new one. It looks to be new to me. I, I just went through all seven papers and I haven't seen it. That is a new winner oh. indeed. All right. I know who it's not. Watch your ears. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, you mean? Not yet. Not yet. Let's That's go. right. That's right. <laughs> All right. Congratulations to that new winner. Do we have Mr. Z here? He was actually tonight over at the uh, Z. Z was over with us. At the poker game. He Give me was. a quick second. Let me check in. Let me see here. Just bear with me a second. Let me check him down real quick. Hey Atlas, I um I told Coach Brad, or I just sent him a message, but I thought I'd let you know. I went ahead and I dropped another uh, YouTube video. Oh, nice. I haven't seen that, Butter. Great stuff. Yep, I did. All right. Yeah, Z's not going to be able to make it uh, to do the DeFi sessions tonight. So how are we doing on time, Coach Brad? I know we started pretty late. Are we at the hour yet? Are we past the hour? No, we're we're on forty five minutes, um, so we're we're on on good time. But um, uh, I'm just just let just let me confirm something. I need to check that vault account for that winner uh, from tonight. I 
I've never seen them before, and it just sparked me. I mean, we check every single wallet address, right, to make sure that they have an active vault account to be eligible for the for the sweet widget. But we can't check it until it's drawn um, because we don't, you know, we don't have the wallet address. But I don't think they have an active vault account, so maybe we do a redraw of the list of names. All right. Let's do it. Yeah, they they do not have an active vault account, so they are not eligible to win. So, um, Mistletoad, if you'd like to bring your screen back up, sir. Um, I'm not sure if everything's loaded and ready to go. I don't know how the, yep. the wheel works. Oh, good. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, you know, we no, nothing gets biased. We check everything. We check everything twice. And, um, you know, we, the, the rules stipulate you have to have an active vault account to be eligible to win and you need to complete all of the tasks. So uh, unfortunately for that person, they are not eligible. But we did spend twice, right? <laughs> <laughs> Vanilla Gorilla, if you hadn't won so many times, we would probably uh, not redraw, but that that wasn't an official draw. That was, um, do you see how Mistletoe just randomized all of the names there? We, we always do that before before we do the draw, because um, if you are on the side where the winning pin is now, um, you know, it, it, I don't know how much chance you've got of, of winning. So we always shuffle it every time before we draw. All right, are we ready for round two? Yes, sir. Absolutely. On the count of three, two, one. Lily Vass, two. Congratulations. Now we got to confirm again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brad, I'm going to send it to you to d just to double check. No problem. Oh, just take me one moment here. And since we don't have a DeFi sessions tonight, we've had a, a video I've been wanting to show you folks regarding zero knowledge. What is zero knowledge? Why is this the future of cryptography, the, the future of the blockchains? And uh, this video explains it from the level of a five-year-old to a PhD so that anyone, regardless of their, their level of understanding or education, they don't have to be a blockchain expert. But if they are, they're, they're going to learn what, the ZK rollups is about zero knowledge. Do you have a confirmation on that, Coach Brad? Before we start this, that is a qualified I have, investor. I have, I have confirmation that we need to do another redraw. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do it at the end of this. We're not in a rush because yeah. um, we're going to keep turning stuff on. So um, just hang in there, and uh, let's let's find out what zero knowledge is. We talk about it here a lot, but let's deep, deep dive. Under the hood, let's get descriptive, folks. Sit back and relax. It's about 22 minutes. If you want to fall asleep, go ahead. You can do that too. 
Hi, my name is Amit Sahai, and I'm a professor of computer science at the UCLA Samueli School of Engineering. Today, I've been asked to explain zero knowledge proofs in five levels of increasing complexity. A zero knowledge proof is a way for a prover to convince a verifier that some statement is true and yet reveal no additional information beyond the fact that the statement is true. Zero knowledge proofs are being used in blockchains and cryptocurrencies. So cryptographers are excited about zero knowledge because of its amazing mathematical properties, but also because of its incredible applicability to so many different scenarios. What's your favorite subject? I'd say math. Some of these small problems can actually be really big and complicated. It's like a puzzle. I love math for the same reason. Today, I'm going to tell you about, I think, zero knowledge proof. So in a zero knowledge proof, there are two people. There's a prover and a verifier. And I want to prove that something is true to you. But the weird thing is, I want to prove to you that it's true without telling you any reasons why. I remember when I first heard about it, I was like, wait, what? How can that possibly be, right? Yeah. So what do you see in this photo? A lot of penguins. Yeah. Hidden among all these penguins is a puffin. Do you want to try to look for it? Do you see where it is? Hmm. I know where it is, but I don't want to tell you. Do you believe me? You're not sure to believe me, right? Yeah. But what if I could prove to you that I know where the puffin is without revealing to you where it is? Let me show you. I took that photo that we showed you and I put it behind this poster here. Why don't you go take a look through that hole? I see the puffin. So when you look at this board, we don't know where the photo was, right? Was the photo like with the corner here, in which case the puffin would be all the way at this side? Or was the photo with the corner here, in which case the puffin would be on the other side? So this is a really simple example of a zero knowledge proof. I convinced you that I knew where the puffin was, but you didn't learn anything else. Why do you study zero knowledge proof? When I first learned about them, I just thought they were so cool. But it turns out they're also really useful, not just for finding like, like puffins. If you just type in your password and the hacker hacks into the computer, they can just get your password, right? Yeah. What if instead we could somehow use a zero knowledge proof to log in? You would just be able to prove that, hey, I'm Chelsea without revealing anything to them. If you could do that, then it would be amazing, right? Yeah. Because then even if the hacker hacked into the computer, he wouldn't learn anything because even the computer doesn't learn anything. So Chelsea, in your own words, what is a zero knowledge proof? Zero knowledge proof is proof to a statement. You don't show them why or what. You just show them a tiny segment or just do some sort of weird magic trick that's not really a magic trick and they will be convinced and you didn't show them why or anything like that so have you ever heard the term zero knowledge proof before i have not you no have not, right it's a way for a prover to convince a verifier that something is true without revealing anything about why it's true, which sounds totally bizarre, right? Like, yeah. how can that possibly be? What I want to do is prove to you that I know this combination without revealing the combination to you. And what you could do is you could write a little note, a secret that I definitely wouldn't know. Fold it up, stick it in here. And then if I know the combination, I should be able to open it and tell you what you wrote. All right. There we go. All right. So my dog is named Doug. Did you figure out what the combination was? No. So nowhere in this interaction did you see any information that you didn't already know. And yet I convinced you that I know the combination, right? Yeah. So what's the exact purpose of a zero knowledge proof? Is it like proving something, but without giving enough information that could in danger, whatever it is that you're proving. So you're asking like, why shouldn't I just share my secrets with somebody? People don't trust each other. And if I was able to prove that I've done something correctly to someone, 
without having to reveal my secrets, then that person would trust me more. How does this relate to computer technology? Like, do you type it into a computer and somebody else receives it? Or is it an in-person interaction? Suppose you wanted to exchange messages with someone that you knew. Mm -hmm. What would you guys do? You'd probably first get together and like figure out some secret code, right? And then like write messages to each other in that code. But what if you've never met the person before? What if you want to exchange secret messages with me and we've never met each other before? How could we possibly do that? I have no idea. It sounds impossible, right? It does. But it's not. We wouldn't use like a physical lock or a physical box. We would instead use mathematics to do these kinds of things. You could take a message and encrypt it using mathematics. And then I could prove to you that I know the key. I could open it up and send it back to you. That way I would be proving to you that I know the mathematical key to the mathematical lockbox. So based on what we've discussed today, in your own words, what is a zero knowledge proof? It's like if you have this really important secret that you want somebody to know about, but you don't want to tell them everything, you can use a zero knowledge proof to prove to them that secret, but not give away all of it. What are you studying? I'm a first year computer science student at USC Viterbi. I'm interested in all things like data and internet and blockchain and cryptocurrency. Have you ever heard of zero knowledge proofs? Only in past. So actually in the blockchain space is one of the spaces where we are seeing zero knowledge proofs being implemented. And, uh, and I think it's just the beginning. Let's talk about zero knowledge proofs. At its core, a zero knowledge proof is an interaction between two people. Then I should be able to convince you that some statement is true, but you won't have any idea why it's true. Well, I, like understand that it's true because like, you know, the operations performed in the proof are like of a certain, like, you know, they have like a certain attributes that would make them true. What you're basically asking is, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? So this is what makes zero knowledge proof so fascinating and so counterintuitive. And I think the best way I can, um, I can explain it to you is by, by means of an example. But before we do that, I have to decide what I'm going to prove to you in a, with a zero knowledge proof. Sounds right? good. And the way we're going to approach this is through something called NP completeness. What an NP complete problem is, it's a problem that's really hard to solve. But if you can solve it, you can solve any problem that's in the class NP. And that includes a vast number of problems. And what we're going to do is we're going to use an NP-complete problem to actually prove in, an incredible variety of statements through a zero-knowledge proof. And the specific NP-complete problem that we're going to be looking at is called map three coloring. Okay, so here we have a map, okay? And these are a bunch of countries. And we've arranged them so that no countries that have the same color share a border. That's what makes a map like this validly colored. And now you might think, well, why should we care? It turns out that whether or not a map can be three colored in this way is an example of an NP complete problem. And it turns out that, you know, maybe what you really want to do is you want to give a zero knowledge proof that you have at least 0.3 bitcoins, right? That would be cool. <laughs> Yeah. Without revealing what the address is of, the, of, your, of your account. It turns out I can take that statement that I have at least 0.2 Bitcoins and convert it into a map of countries. And that map of countries will be three colorable like this only if you have at least 0.2 Bitcoins. How would we turn something like this into a zero knowledge proof? Of course, the first step is we have to erase all the colors. What I've done is I've put a color inside each of these envelopes. Now, how do you know that it's a valid coloring? You don't, right? You have to pick any two neighboring countries. You right. can pick them however you like, at random. Can I get these two? These two. All right, sounds good, right? Here we have green, right? And over here, we have blue, okay? And as you can see, they're two different colors, mm -hmm. right? So you have a little bit of confidence, right, that I have managed to color this correctly but not that much confidence because I've only shown you two of the countries. Yeah. Right? So now, of course, one way to get more confidence is, is to open up more of them for you, but that will be revealing information to you. I don't want to do that. So instead, I'm going to ask you to please turn around. And now let's change up these colors. Can you pick two countries at random and, and we'll reveal to you the colors again? I'll pick this one and this one. 
nice. And they're smart of you to check with the same one of the ones you already had, right? Mm -hmm. But as you'll see now, it's not green, it's blue. And this one, on the other hand, is green. Okay, the colors I showed you last time don't work with these new colors, right? This wouldn't have worked. Before. Yeah, because of this one, right? Exactly, right? But it works for this coloring that I'm showing you right now. So what we've done is we've made it impossible for you to put the pieces together. And if you do this, let's say, a thousand times, and if I correctly showed you different colors each thousand times, you'd be really convinced. And that's it. That's the entire zero-knowledge proof. Oh, okay. okay. So is it like there's no like actual like explicit like step one, step two, step no. three? It's just like a probabilistic proof. It's, of yeah, in actual implementations, we wouldn't use envelopes. We yeah. would use encryption, right? But it's really this is the protocol. So what are the broader implications of like zero knowledge proofs? Are they supposed to be like more practical for like implementation and or are they supposed to like structurally prove something? It's not about making something more efficient. It's about doing things that we just didn't know how to do before. I can actually prove to you without revealing to you any of my secrets that I use to behave honestly, right? I could prove to you that I sign some encrypted document correctly, right? Without revealing to you what that secret document was. That ability to change the game, like really just change what we can do is what zero knowledge brings to the table. Where do you think we could build like more trust using like zero knowledge proofs and like right. its implementations? One great example is like in elections. If you could prove that an election was correctly conducted, that every vote was counted and it all added up to one person winning with a particular total in zero knowledge, then you don't have to give up the actual votes of any person. And yet everyone could see that, hey, yeah, it, it was done correctly. It's so great to, to have you here and to talk with you, Eli. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your research? My research is in cryptography. Specifically, I'm working on some various multi-party computation protocols. The one I'm working on right now is a system for computing aggregate statistics so that service providers like Google Chrome or Tesla can collect those statistics without learning anything about individual users' data. That's so awesome. I, as a user, don't have to let Firefox know that my favorite website is mylittlepony.com, <laughs> but they can know how many users go to mylittlepony.com every day. That's near and dear to my heart. Most uh, party computation. And obviously, zero-knowledge proofs are about proving things to another person without revealing the details of what it is that you're proving. But, you know, in my mind, zero knowledge actually goes even further beyond that. It's like this overarching concept that you can see a lot in multi-party computation where you want to accomplish some sort of task without revealing anything more than exactly what you need to accomplish that task. Right. And it allows you to prove that you've been behaving honestly without revealing any of the secrets involved that you used to actually behave honestly. So we, of course, know that zero-knowledge proofs for NP-complete languages play such a huge role in cryptography. I'm curious, what, what was your first experience with NP-completeness like? Yeah, so my first encounter with NP-completeness was in my very first algorithms class that I took mm -hmm. as an undergraduate. So that was my first introduction, is that an NP-complete language is this amazing problem that not only tells you about itself, but solving this problem can actually tell you about an entire class of really interesting problems. When we first started thinking about proofs as an interactive game where we're talking to each other, that made zero knowledge possible. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And, uh, and the idea that randomness could yeah. be useful for proving something, again, seems so counterintuitive. If we think about this platonic ideal of a proof, right, there's no randomness, there's no non-determinism. Yeah. That's present there. And it has to do with, you know, this whole idea of flipping a proof on its head. You know, in an old classical proof, randomness is specifically against the goal of what you're trying to do. Right. Because you're trying to make everything obvious and you're trying to re reveal the flow of information. Indeed. But once you flip that on its head and you're no longer trying to do that, suddenly all of the bad properties of randomness become good. Exactly. Right. Because randomness is unpredictable. And that's what we want. Right. We want that unpredictability of randomness to be utilized to actually hide 
the information that we want to hide. How have you used your knowledge in the projects you've worked on? What are the challenges that you find? In my experience, usually the hardest part is figuring out exactly where the best place is to use it. I've written some papers in the past that have used zero knowledge in a more theoretical way, but when it comes to applications, uh, some of the most exciting applications that I've seen so far have been in the blockchain space. So what are some of the efficiency bottlenecks that you find? In terms of efficiency, uh, one of the coolest things about zero knowledge proofs is that there's so many kinds. Right. I like to call them flavors. I think that in general, when you're using zero knowledge proofs in application, the main bottleneck tends to lie on the prover. Can you take the prover's job and split it up into lots of parallel computations? Ooh. Right. That's such a fun question. It's such a great question. And um, yeah, I think uh, I think we still don't know the answer to that as a field. One of the coolest things I've seen over the past, you know, three or four years when I've been working on this kind of stuff is the transition from theoretical to applied and right. seeing all of these amazing systems that people thought of in the past 30 years start to actually get efficient enough to be actually made. No doubt. And especially with cloud computing, exploiting the power of the cloud to enable zero knowledge proofs and to make use of zero knowledge proofs would be, would be amazing. Yeah, right? And uh, also in the blockchain space, for example, if you want to speed up the generation of proofs, if that could be done in a distributed way, then that would be great. One of the hopes that I have is that the power of multi-party computation is about bringing people together who are mutually distrustful. Yeah. Right. So can we take that power that's there in the, in the cryptography and use it to somehow help with the tremendous level of mistrust that exists in society right now in helping to bring groups of people together? I think that's one of the reasons that I was so drawn to multi-party computation in the first place. In my mind, one of the most important problems in the world is the fact that so many people don't trust each other. And to be able to actually use math to create technology that can allow people to work together without having to trust each other is a really cool and awesome mission, I think. Jack, well, it's so great to, to see you again. I think last time we met was in 2017 or something like that. I think we, we Zoomed once uh, during the pandemic. But uh, it's good to see you in person. Right, absolutely. And uh, actually, in 86, I was taking a crypto class with Professor Len Edelman, the A of RSA. And he assigned me the paper by uh, Golden Wasser Mikhali, uh, Charlie Rakoff on zero knowledge proof. So that's indeed my first ever presentation ever in this country. Was about zero knowledge. That's was about zero knowledge, yeah, yes. No, it's such a almost hypnotic concept. It's also an interesting um, way how mathematically to formulate those concepts, right? For example, right. Uh, we have data. Then we eventually we said that from data, like data mining, you can get the information. And then you have this word called knowledge, right? Right. So knowledge has been long debated, even in philosophy, what is knowledge? Indeed. But here is in a very fascinating way, mathematicians or computer scientists right. want to somehow capture knowledge. They didn't say zero information proof. Right. So so what's your take on why knowledge is rather than information or zero data proof? Clearly there's data there. So can't be zero data. Absolutely. I don't think we still have a completely satisfactory answer to that question. But was so such a beautiful insight, as I, I as I'm sure you know, is that the idea of zero knowledge mm -hmm. being something that you can already predict. Right. If you mm -hmm. can already predict the answer, then you must not be gaining any knowledge by that interaction. This insight of being able to predict the future accurately and that being an evidence of a lack of new knowledge mm -hmm. was such a beautiful insight, such an amazing insight. But why not zero information here? Fundamentally, I, uh, clearly from computing perspective, security perspective, it's a how much knowledge you gain, I guess, more than how much information you gain Indeed. and how yeah. much data you have, right? right? So that big data doesn't immediately imply a knowledge, but That's people true. can sometimes. Right, sometimes. I mean, for right. example, in medical research, how amazing would it be, right, to be able to have a drug and be able to prove that my drug works in this mm -hmm. model and yet not have to actually reveal the structure of the compound. What uh, currently uh, you think it would be the next directions? Yeah. 
in, in, what in are this the next space. big things? Yes. Yeah. This concept of zero knowledge programs would allow you to carry out completely arbitrary computations in mm-hmm. a zero knowledge way without any interaction, right? I can just take the program, convert it to a zero knowledge program or an obfuscated program, and then just send it to you. Right? Mm-hmm. And then you can run it and gain the benefit of that computation without having to talk to me anymore. That's right. right. There's a non-interactive nature. The non-interactive nature. But with verifi- uh, verifiability in it. In it Indeed. Right? Sometimes when, for example, when you have multi-protocol exchange, that, you know, there's like a random number showed up, you have to uh, enter the random number as part of authentication yes. right now. Yeah. Right. Clearly, I think in blockchain, they also began to incorporate more uh, zero yeah. knowledge proof in the ledger. We're definitely at this moment now where zero knowledge is going to be used more and more. There's so many uh, conferences and meetings that, that occur in the zero knowledge space where you and I are not invited because it's, it's for the people <laughs> who are, who are developing and the people who are programming, not us mathematicians. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I think that's yes. a sign. That's a sign that it's sign left, our baby has grown up and you know, it's time for it to be developed. I think profoundly the students often also ask me, what are the future direction, both in terms of crypto, zero knowledge proof in the real world and how mathematically you see in computing? It's a great question. I, and I wish I could see the future. I, I can't actually, but let me try. The part of that that I'm the most comfortable answering is, of course, the mathematical side. Mm-hmm. I think that there is, you know, we've done so much in cryptography over the last few decades, but we understand so little. You know, even mm-hmm. today, we understand so little. And I think the most fundamental aspect of that is understanding hardness. How do we get hard problems? Mm -hmm. How do we actually build mathematically hard problems so that we can then use them to build efficient zero-knowledge programs Mm -hmm. and efficient zero-knowledge proofs, right? I guess also with quantum computing, you need even harder problems. Indeed, absolutely. You know, now that we have, we have the specter of quantum computing coming at us and we all know that quantum computers can break a lot of cryptographic systems. That's a profound challenge. It's a profound challenge. So can we find new sources of hardness that are quantum resistant. That's Even right. quantum computers can't break. And that's something I've been working on for the last several years, but I'd be very excited to see what happens in that in that space. But I'm sure they will motivate uh, beautiful mathematics. Yes, that's right. You know, one of the great things about the real world is that people in the real world have demands, and those that's demands right. often sound impossible. And that's where we come in. It's our job to make the impossible possible. All right, that's it. Any questions, comments? Is everyone here a, a zero knowledge expert already? <laughs> it's easier to uh, quiet your mind <laughs> and get to nothing there. That's unbelievable. It's, it's the future. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, uh... <clears throat> it's been it's been over thirteen years since uh, Bitcoin, and uh, that whole technology came out. And at this point, Satoshi needs a new pair of shoes. He's walked a long way. <laughs> And uh, we we see what's coming and we understand and we're building on what's coming. And it is zero knowledge, folks. This is the future. This uh, technology is going to go into everything as, as to using a, a payment system to opening up your, your car or opening up a safe and really protecting your your data protecting your identity protecting what do you have in a wallet how does the flow of the transaction happen without everyone being able to see it but being verified that everything was handled correctly and in a trustless manner uh, one of the i think weaknesses with the current blockchains that we're used to is that it is so transparent but with that transparency comes the sacrifice of of your privacy if you have a account at Bank of America or Wells Fargo or Chase, no one, you know, 
your neighbor, for example, he, he can't see the balance in your Wells Fargo. Your dentist, when you go and make a payment, can't see your your balance or what you spent your money on this past month or, or where you ate last week. But in, in blockchain, you can in the current conditions. Very fast, very efficient, but the privacy components are, are just leaving a lot, leaving a lot of vulnerability and and there, there, there's, there's a lot of situations, and they brought up the quantum computing. So, yeah, I'd like to get your, your opinions or your questions. I love those kind of videos. That I love when they break it down in like different levels of education. Because for me, like I, I don't know much on zero knowledge, and I've been meeting to kind of research that stuff. And I even just love the first example that he showed the ten year old. Like that was really cool. And, an easy way to, to explain it, kind of the aha moment. Yeah, if we would have started at the end, <laughs> at the expert level, it's, you, you get a little lost. So uh, yeah. yeah, that's why, that's why I wanted to share it because it is it is something very new for all of us. It's something I've been I've been working and tracking on for, for quite some time, and and uh, we're we're building on that for our future for our our layer one. This is. This is it. This is where everything's going to move to understanding, like you heard there about quantum computing and how the encryptions that we have today uh, are going to be a joke <laughs> for quantum computers. So who controls those will be able to hack and, and move things around. And, and the things that we feel secure today will, will be vulnerabilities in the future. So how do we shift into a, le a, a, a level of security, anonymity, and protection of our data without being compromised by the power. So everything has to upgrade. And with that comes so much privacy and also speed, which is another great aspect. I mean, you're, you're looking at systems nowadays that can do 210,000 transactions per second. You look at Visa and it can do only 24,000 transactions per second. Binance Smart Chain, where we like to trade, can only do 300 transactions per second. That in itself is just alone mind blowing when you compare. Oh, so safer quantum, and smarter. Quantum computing, you're saying how they're cracking things. Have you seen um, some of the new statistics on uh, brute force hacking for passwords? No, no. So what's, what's in like? 20, according since 2022, since last year, they did a they did a kind of a little study, I guess. And if you have if your password is eight characters long and even has a mixture of upper and lowercase letters and numbers, it can be hacked in two minutes nowadays, which is insane. Yeah, I know. I know for like like Android phones and iPhones. There, there is a software that <laughs> in less than nine minutes will crack any phone out there, and, and yep. law enforcement uses uses that. So there, there, there is no real <laughs> security out there. <laughs> they know how to do it. No, oh, it's crazy. So, mm -hmm. so zero proofs will give us. You can't access this unless you have the ability to confirm pieces of it that allow you to prove to me that you qualify to open it. So it just, it just makes it a lot more difficult, right? Yeah, it's cool stuff. How'd you like it? Anyone else? I think Crypto Putter, you wanted to say something, sir. Uh, yeah. Well, first of all, that's like way above my pay grade. So, um, yeah, I, I was down there with the 10-year-old uh, and that was pushing it. Um, but <laughs> this, this, I, something's happening and I don't understand it, uh, because, you know, I just, I just said that I dropped another video and yay for me. Uh, and I'm watching this video that you just pulled up and I'm, I'm like, you know what, this, this would really help me understand how this stuff works, uh, to a degree and, and, and put trust into somebody that is trying to explain it to me if they're explaining it to me in the right way where 
it leads me to trust them more. And so, I, you know, I was really in tuned into watching it and everything. And <clears throat> I was just about to leave uh, the podcast and I came over um, to my vault and um, because I hadn't allocated at the time yet. And um, I seen a pending deposit. And I'm like, what? And I looked down at the bottom where the deposit is, and I still got almost seven arc in there that I can, you know, redeposit. I'm like, where did that come from? Go over to my syndicate, and I'll be damned if I don't have another person signed up underneath me. And I don't know who it is. Not a clue. So I just went nice. and I just went ahead and, you know, because this is what I, uh, I like to do in my videos, but I'll, I'll also say it on here. Uh, instead of doing the compound withdrawal, I just went ahead and did a 50 compound, 50 airdrop and airdrop both of the people that were underneath me. So they got equal amounts and, you know, it, it's, it's happy time for everybody. <laughs> so, there I go and there I be, but I don't know who either one of these people are, but I am greatly appreciative. Yes, sir. It pays to do the work and and step out of the comfort zone, man. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. That matter of this matter. Of that. All right. But do do you have any uh, words on the on the zero knowledge? From your side? Uh, no, not really. Those kids didn't know anything about zero knowledge when they got finished with that explanation. <laughs> <laughs> the architect could do it better. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, what I think, you know, what the, was funny was the expert was probably the most, I think, clear explanation about what it is and how it actually works. And also the lockbox, I think, was the most explicative you know, uh, demonstration of how it works. Um, but yeah, I, I, it sounds like it's still developing, you know, I'm sure that they have zero knowledge proofs that are working now, but what it sounds like is they have to move it forward so fast because, um, you know, these encryption models with quantum computing, uh, as you mentioned, um, they know within two to three years, any encryption will be able to get hacked or broken um, in that time frame, and uh, I, I would imagine as AI also comes on board, that that will help them with these zero knowledge proofs and creating those, as they can teach the computers to create new and unique mathematical equations that only um, you know uh, single point sources can solve. I think that's the challenge, right? Correct. That's where you got all the different flavors <laughs> yeah. with uh, different levels of complexity. But, yeah, even the uh, college, kid, the yeah, the college mm -hmm. kid didn't even give a description. He, he, he is clueless at the end. <laughs> but without a doubt, that's, that's the, uh, the right direction. And we just wanted to uh, sit here and... Oh, yeah. And ex ex yeah, if, expose if wanna, the community. Yeah, if you want to go where the go where the puck's heading, you know, and, and not develop something that's going to be out uh, outdated in in a year or two, uh, you it sounds like you need to incorporate that into the the framework of whatever you're building, you know. Otherwise, you'll be left behind because by the time you develop it, get it out and launch it, it'll be obsolete. <laughs> Direct the mundo. That's. That's where it is. That's where it's at. So uh, let's see if there's anybody else has a question or a comment before we conclude tonight's podcast. Oh, we got we got Mr. Brandon in the house. <laughs> hey. Instead of right to, right to the end, <laughs> we're just about to close it out. Yeah, I'm sorry. A uh, little bit of family time today, this evening, this afternoon. 
Okay, so we know you're working hard on, on your project. We're looking forward, folks. Uh, come on Wednesday after the podcast, and uh, Brandon's going to be here with, with the good Anthony Fauci, uh, bringing you some healthy products that can really make a difference in your life. So they're going to they're talk to us on Wednesday about what they're up to, what they're building, and the future of their company. So really excited to, to have you guys uh, come on Wednesday. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Uh, sorry I missed the podcast again. Uh, just uh, just had a really busy week and spent a little bit of time with the family here this afternoon. That's important, my friend. Very, very important. I need what to apologize, we did, man. We, uh, we, what, we watched, what happened at the Penguin game? I thought you were... Oh, dude, I got knocked out uh, in 11th place, man. Oh, uh, you were there. You were. You must have been on another table then, because I didn't see you. I was on a different table, and then uh, yeah, I uh, I got knocked out within two with two basic hands against the same uh, same guy. The guy that actually the guy that ended up winning the whole tournament was the guy that knocked me out, and um, yeah, I I, I went. Uh, I put him all in. We'll talk, with, about the we'll talk about the details. Be in mind. I'm, I'm going to close out the podcast. Okay. And then we okay. can hang out for the of Q and A. We we just did a a deep dive into the uh, zero knowledge. I'm getting a back. I'm getting some background noise here. Uh, thanks, folks. So, folks, we want to thank every single one of you that came out this evening. If you came to the poker game, participated. Thank you as well. We didn't get the win this time, so we we lost the title right so the second round we were we were taken out but it was a great experience great developers uh shout out to to only burns and yabonks and really everyone that was there uh we're gonna stay here for some q a talk a little bit about the game after the recording we uh want to thank everyone for listening who's participating through listening at a later time uh sorry we probably went a little bit long today but i hope you enjoyed the podcast, uh, congratulations to the winner, and I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about the future, what zero knowledge is, and all the implementations for blockchain, because we know that, you know, it's been 13 years. Thank you, Mr. Satoshi, but he definitely needs a new pair of shoes. He's walked a very long way, and a new technology needs to come in. Quantum computing is going to be cracking every password to all of our wallets, we all know that, so we need to stay ahead of the curve and use the technology that's going to be there to protect us and our data. Let's get the script to folks. Have a great night. Thank you.